for our second channel, S2. So again, if we go back down here to the materials, we got S1 selected, here's S2. We're going to use a matte cap. You can use any matte cap because we will modify it anyway, but I think the flat sketch 01 is already pretty close to what we need. For the following the process of copy SH and paste SH from previously, uh, bring the flat sketch 01 into the second channel of our quadrator material. So flat sketch 01 is under our matte caps. And where is that at? Framer. Oh, there it is, flat sketch 01. So go ahead and select that one. We got S1 selected. We're going to do copy SH, and then we're going to go back to our quad shader here, go into S2, and now uh, we can go ahead and turn it on if you want to at this point. We can do paste SH, uh, but if you want to, you can go ahead and keep that off. So, uh huh, quad shader material. Turn off the first shader so that you can only see the contribution of shader 2. So, we're going to turn on shader 2 and then turn off shader 1 for now. Um, so, the idea with the second one is to create uh, volume lines that describe the shapes and masses of your character. So you can, you'll be able to modify uh, not only the line, the ink part of it, you're going to be able to define the uh, form and shade part of this thing once we're done. Um, I said the Flat Sketcher 1 does a pretty good job, but it can be further refined. So start by turning the opacity to 100. So under S2 here, we've got our opacity at 51. Let's crank that up to 100% to make sure we see what the shader does at 100%. We're going to tweak the cavity detection and cavity transition to create lines based on the crevices, peaks, and hard edges of our model. Let's do a quick overview of what these modifiers do. So cavity detection, let's go ahead and turn our poly paint on here. Essentially, the cavity detection defines how strong or how much contrast there is between the raised areas and the crevices of the cavities. For the purposes of what we're trying to achieve, it's almost like using levels in Photoshop to contrast the lines of a sketch. So as you turn the slider on, any value other than zero, and this is cavity detection here, so it's right here, uh, if we turn this down to zero, here it is off. So as we crank this up, you're going to start seeing the dark lines and the light lines start uh, getting a little bit more contrast. I've already mentioned that in the last section when I talked about depth A and depth B and orientation, let's just sum this up like this. If cavity detection equals zero, like so, any B slider is irrelevant as it won't have any effect. So any of these uh, depth B and uh, depth A and all these A and B things here won't have any effect. So cavity detection has to be on for the B sliders to have any effect. So cavity detection at zero, cavity detection all the way at one. Those are the differences. Cavity transition. This is obviously linked to our cavity detection slider, but it deals with how sharp or soft the transition is between the dark recessed areas and the raised light areas. Uh, the modifier will greatly affect the look of the shader because it allows the input of either positive or negative values. This will also serve as an invert function for our purposes. So cavity transition. Uh, right now, cavity detection is at 1, so we take the transition and go to negative 1. Now it's mostly light with a few dark areas, and we go to positive 1. It's going to be mostly dark with a few light areas in for the edges there. Tip, you can benefit from the B sliders without having to see the cavities. You can make the cavity detection 1. This enables the B sliders and change only the cavity transition to 0, which keeps the B sliders on without seeing any of the cavities here. Um, hopefully that's not too confusing. Basically, we need to know about these sliders we create our comic material is that the cavity detection will give us the lines in the deep areas and the cavity transition will determine the sharpness of those lines. That makes sense. So before we tweak those uh, settings, change the color B to black and leave color A in white. So let's go ahead and go back to our model here. So color B, we're just going to drag that over here to the black and leave color A to white. Uh, we're not going to use the intensity A and B that are right below the cavity transition, so change them to zero. So intensity A and B, we're going to go ahead and make zero here. And instead, we're going to use the intensity A slider at one located towards the bottom of the modifier slope set. So intensity A, one. Uh, Difference is the first two deal with the texture input of the mat cap, and the second two refer to the intensity of the colors we pick for A and B. Um, now, this is where I started having problems following along. So if you got our cavity detection here, and this is up, and this is cavity transition, oh, it's zero. There we go. And then here we're all set up. Intensity A is at 1, B is at 0, and then these are all zeroed out. We've got this all set up, and then we've got our Z texture in there, which is just a gray material. We also need to get rid of the texture used, so we'll go ahead and do that and select texture off. So now I need to do a set intensity 1, intensity A to 1 to get 100% of the A color. Then you can play with the cavity detection, cavity transition sliders to find a nice balance between A the white color for the raised areas, and B, the black color for our cavities. So here, and then transition here, and I'm not getting anything to show up. So this is where I kind of had to deviate here. So in order for this to kind of work for me, I'm going to grab, you know what, let's just do this. Let's go into Photoshop real quick. And I'm just going to make a gray uh, object here that I can kind of just use. Let's do Control-N to make a new file. 
Oh my goodness, I forgot I uh, changed this. Oh yeah, da, 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 da. let's do 512 by 512, 72 pixel minutes RGB color, create. And then we're gonna go into our color here and we'll do RGMB 128, 128, 128, and then we'll go to color fill, edit, fill, foreground color. There we go. So now we'll go ahead and save this onto our desktop as a JPEG. All right. So now we've got a gray texture we can kind of just bring in. So in order for this to work <coughs> the way I think I need it to, we're going to go to texture import, and we're going to go to desktop here. We're going to grab gray, and then we're going to change our intensity A and we'll just go to turn our poly frame off here. So intensity A is at one here. Let's see what I did here in our cavity detection. Let me play with this for just a second here. Uh, so we're trying to get that look here. Now intensity A, okay, there we go. So for some reason, uh, I'm not able to follow these settings here because it kind of does some weird stuff here. So I'm gonna leave this at zero cavity transit. So with the gray plugged in and not doing the intensity A and B because I think those aren't working as intended. What I'm gonna to have to do is go back up here to cavity detection. I'm just gonna kind of dial in what I see here to kind of get the look we're going for here. It looks pretty subtle here. So I'm just going to, okay, so cavity detection, he has it at like 0.4, so we can kind of crank that up a little bit. And then cavity transition we have at negative three-ish. And then intensity A, we can kind of start cranking up until we kind of get that look here. So it's kind of dialing in all of these things, honestly as far as I could tell. We'll knock that back just a little bit. So this is kind of the look I'm getting here. So if you're having trouble, like I am, getting this matte cap to behave, uh, just put in a gray, turn intensity A down, and then do your cavity detection, cavity transition to kind of dial in the look you're getting here. So cool. Here's the final values I ended up using. So opacity at 100, op uh, cavity detection at 0.7. And really, like I said before, just go ahead and just kind of dial in these settings to kind of just make it look like this. You didn't necessarily have to use these settings I use, and do you have a different model? The material will look slightly different than how it looks in the Kepler character. Either way, you should aim for something that looks a bit like this using the head or test objects here. Basically, we have a good chance, we have a good balance of white for the raised areas and then close to pure black for the crevices or our volume lines, and a gray is an in between for all those flat or smooth areas. At this point, this is as exciting as ZBrush default sketch shaders could be, but there's a difference. We have set up the rest of the modifiers just to add a couple of extra steps and watch the magic happen. Ready to be amazed at the power of ZBrush. So we're gonna turn uh, the intensity A to three, the first one right below cavity transition. So intensity A to three here. This simply is, uh, nothing happens, still no magic sensitivities because as mentioned before, this is intensity set is very important for any matte cap, but our shader right now we have is not really a matte cap and that we haven't added any image. Well, we did add an image here. Uh, so he says, go ahead and click on the texture input and select texture 28, the one that looks like marble. This is what we're looking for, but how? So let's see if we can find that texture 28. Here is marble. Go ahead and plug that in. And then let's go ahead and take that intensity down so we can kind of match. Instead of three, we'll do a little lower there. There we go. Okay, so uh, this is it. This is what we're looking for, but how? Uh, well, once we added the texture, we have an actual matte cap, again, driven by the texture. The texture is replacing everything that we set up to be gray. And in fact, if you don't want to kind of get that marble in there, let's just go ahead and import our uh, gray again. And now we can kind of dial in that line look there. There we go. It's super cool because ultimately we can add any texture here to create any type of matte cap where we retain the volume lines. Okay, so yeah, if we go here to texture 40, that's going to be, we're still getting light edges and dark edges here. And we go to texture 27 here, which is the wood texture. It'll still have the dark lines and the light edges. So you can just change this texture out and still get the same effect here. But like I said before, we'll just go ahead and keep gray. You might've noticed in the previous examples with that the color information from the texture input is mixed with the gray color, which makes the colors look dull. This can be fixed by tweaking the intensity A, which we've already done, but we want that comic book look, so we won't worry about that in this tutorial. So cool, all we have left is to turn on our base shader for S1 and see how it looks. So if we turn on S1, just by clicking that open circuit, you see everything disappears. Um, so all the hard work is gone. It's still there, but we haven't told ZBrush how to mix S1 and S2, so we're just getting them both at the same time with the same contribution. So all we need to do now is open up the mixer sub palette to find how we want the matte cap S2 to be mixed with our bit shader in S1. So go to the mixer area here, and if you wanna keep both of these open, so we've got the modifiers open, just hold down shift and then click the mixer open, and that'll, that'll tell the selected shader, so we got S2 selected, how to mix with the shaders around it. Okay, so make sure you're in the matcap S2 and open the mixer. 
tip if you okay here we go shift click a sub palette to keep it open uh, i see the mixer is a blending modes of the layers in the photoshop but on steroids not only can you decide the blending mode for your materials but you can also assign where and how it's applied it's like having a blending mode and masking all in one place so to explain that a little bit better let's move this in just a bit there we go we want to keep the volume lines we've achieved in the MacCap S2, but we also want the functionality the base shader wants. It reacts to the light position and has nice sharp shadows. So go ahead and set the blending mode to multiply in the mixer for S2 here. So we got the mixer here. Instead of replace, we're going to do multiply. And so we keep all the dark values and render the white color transparent. Uh, still doesn't look quite right. You can see that the volume lights from S2 are there, but they're very weak and changing the intensity doesn't do anything. I don't know how familiar you are with Photoshop, but you might have encountered this problem. You have a couple layers of different blending modes and you merge them together. Suddenly, the effects you had on one image change completely. In a simplified way, that's what's happening, but it's a super easy fix. Just turn on the button called black next to the multiply here. Just turn that on. And now you're getting both of these mixed. So if we go back up here and turn off S2. So here's our shadow pass. And then here is our edge detection. So our cavity and our edge highlighting there. This will tell ZBrush to apply this matte cap. The S2 is if there was a black surface underneath it, so it's all good now. Finally, turn on your polyplane, change the main color switch to something other than white or black, or change the main color swatch. So if you want to, you can just go in here and just make it another color, or you can actually turn the polypaint there, and now you can see the effect of the object, uh, the material on your object. Looks good, but it's a bit dark in some areas, so to render outlines in a is working great, but if you want to use a color or a poly paint with a shader, you should probably tweak it a bit further. You can play with the intensity A. Remember, we changed it to 3, which is a lot here. So intensity A, I had to change it to like 1.7 because we put in a gray, not the marble. And with the cavity sliders to find a nice balance. So, you know, change your cavity transition sliders here to kind of punch these in or out, and then your transition A or B to kind of force your poly paint colors through a little bit more. You could also turn the ambient slider from channel 1 all the way to 100 and you can also swap the texture 28 with magic texture jpeg from the tutorial resource folder which is just a plain white texture okay so that's just plain white so if we go here and we change the ambient slider all the way here and we go ahead and just blow it out and then the magic texture is just white texture here so if you go down here texture 28 so that was an s2 here so we kind of had this gray in here we can also go to import go to the resources folder here magic texture and that'll just put in a white and that'll go ahead and throw that in there so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and match this a little bit better so we'll go back here to cavity transition and cavity detection and we'll take that ambient down uh, oops, diffuse up we'll turn that ambient down a bit there we go okay so now go to the document and click on the document background color to choose a white color so we're going to go to document here and in the you're going to see there's there's the background color, just click that and just choose a white color. And we'll go ahead and turn off the poly paint here. Oh, we have red still selected. There we go. Looks like we need an outline, right? Don't worry, it will take us it won't take us much longer to finish the comic material. We have covered most of it in theory, so the next steps are very easy and good for revision. The next map cap we're gonna create is a simple contour line to add it to our super comic material quad shader. Feel free to use any technique we have talked about to create this new map cap. We just need something that in black and white that looks a bit like this. I made this image in Photoshop. So we'll go ahead and go into Photoshop and create this image really quickly. So we'll launch Photoshop here. And if we go into our resources folder, and we did this in part one where we kind of messed around with Photoshop and Matcap here. So we'll go ahead and go to streaming, comic rendering, resources, uh, Photoshop templates, and the Matcap template here. Double click to edit the smart material here. And we can go ahead and delete all of these ones here. So now we just got a black circle here. We can go ahead and just drag this to a new one here. We'll hit Control T to transform. And then as we're dragging this in, hold down Alt, and that'll just drag it in from all sides here. And then hit Enter. Now I just need to change the color of this one. So we'll go ahead and make this white. And now I have our outline here. So let's go ahead and save this, close that. And now this one's ready to save. So we'll go File, Save As, and we'll just throw this again on our desktop with our gray texture here. And we'll call this, I guess we'll just go ahead and make it a JPEG. I mean, you can keep it a Photoshop file, that's fine. Let's go ahead and say this is black outline here. Okay, so pick a matte cap from the material palette. I'll stick with the chalk matte cap. I've been using either example. So we'll go ahead and grab the chalk matte cap. Uh, copy and paste the matte cap into the fourth, fourth channel here. So we'll go ahead and do copy SH. And then we'll go back to our quad shader here. Where did that go? Scan shader four, uh, quad shaders, there it is. And now, uh, and now we're going to skip S3. We're going to go straight to S4 here. Uh, copy and paste the matte cap in the fourth channel. So we're going to go to paste SH. 
Make sure you add it to the first channel because we want to keep the third one free for an extra effect and the order of the channels does matter. So I'll turn off the channels for S1 and S2. So we'll just close those circles there and replace the matcap image in S4 with the one you created. So here we're going to go to import and we're going to go to desktop and we're going to go to black outline. And oh, we need to turn S4 on so you can see it. This image gives us a very nice outline straight away and due to the very defined crevices in the Kepler character, we're also getting some extra volume lines. All we need to do here is to define how thick or thin we want the outlines to be. And if you remember, we can control that with depth A and depth B. Since you're going to be doing it one at a time, you'll witness another display of awesomeness when you take depth A and depth B to different values. So depth A is here. So depth A of three. So you're going to see we're getting thicker outlines from our matte cap here. And then depth B is at one. So yeah, we can just kind of make these thicker or thinner, depending on how thick or thin you want your outline to be. Uh, if you don't see effect of if you don't see the effect of the double shaving having, make sure your matte cap settings are reset to default. Remember, this is why it shows matte cap chalk to start with here. So yeah, just go through here and zero out all of these settings through here, uh, or, or you know, keep them at one or zero depending on what the default is. I'm sure you're already getting many ideas with this so far, but we'll keep this matte cap as, as a simple outline for now. However, we're building a template material that can be used and reused in many ways, so it's good to know the capabilities that are there. That's why my outline matte cap and the setting I end up using are depth A at 0.5 and depth B at 0.5. So we'll go here to 0.5 and depth B at 0.5 again. We don't, I didn't see any doubling, but just in case you are, that's why you want to keep those the same. All I have left to do for this matte cap S4 is to tell ZBrush how to blend it with the rest and we're done. So set the blending mode identical to the previous matte cap. So we're going to go down here to the mixer. And if you don't have this open, just hold down shift and click that open. And then we're going to go here to multiply and then turn on black. And then I'll go ahead and uh, multiply black. And then now the other ones aren't turned on yet. So we got to go back in here and turn on S1 and S2. And now when we turn off and on S4, you're going to see there is our outline. So S4 selected here, S4, S2. Seems like we might be missing a little bit of our shading here. I'll play with it when we get there. Okay, um, add a little extra option to the comic material. We'll use the third channel S3 for that. So we'll select that one. That'll be another very simple matte cap. You can actually copy the S4 into the S3 since all we're going to do is change the matte cap image and tweak it, just the settings just a little bit. So we can go to S4, copy SH, go to S3, paste SH, and now we've got S4 copied into S3. Uh, the image we're after is something like this. I made it in Photoshop. You can create your own or use the one of the resources, long shadows, rim light. So with S3 selected, let's go ahead and import from our streaming here, comic rendering, resources, matte cap images long shadows rim light. This image in the matte cap will create some nice contrast slash shadows and a thin white rim light. Add the image to the matte cap, we copy to channel 3 and turn the rest of the channels off. I guess we'll turn S3 on. And see here, so S3, S4, everything's on. A uh, cool about, thing about having this extra matte cap is you're getting some cool shadows and a rim light at the same time. At any point we can change depth A and depth B and the orientation A and B to achieve different types of shading. So depth A, set the blending mode of Multiply and turn black on and then turn the rest of the channels on. Well, let's see. So multiply is already set for this one. Black is already turned on. So we turn these ones on here. Hmm. I couldn't see it all by itself, but now that we see it with everything else, now we're getting this thing working. So now, again, depth A and depth B, if you don't want that doubling up here, let's go ahead and keep these the same. So we'll go ahead and change these both to two. And then the orientation here, again, you're probably going to want to keep those the same because you're going to start splitting you see as it's changing the mat cap here. So we'll go ahead and um, go ahead and put these both at two. There we go. So now we're getting cool look. And you can also, if you want to, change the opacity of this down. If you want to kind of just have that shading your model or you can crank it up as ink. Uh, set the blend one black on. The reason why I put it in the third channel and not in the fourth one is because the ink shader has a dark ring that works as a black outline already, but there's already a little white outline or rim light that you can use. So S4 again is our outline here. And because this is S3 is so powerful, if we turn that off, now you can kind of see what that outline is doing. Of course, S4 here, this is where you can go through and change those settings to go ahead and get a sharper or a thinner or a thicker outline here. Um, once you turn on the outline and matte cap, once you turn the outline Mac have S4, it will override the rim light, so you get two types of outlines very quickly just by turning on and off the fourth channel. Cool. This is a very lengthy section, but I hope it managed to illustrate some important concepts and that you have now the necessary tools to make your own comic materials. One thing I would like to show you before moving on to the next section is tutorial is obvious but often overlooked modifier, the opacity slider. So change the value of the slider on the different shaders and matte caps from material. You can add, add a whole bunch of other effects, and that's what I was talking about with the S3. If you want to go ahead and change that, you can kind of get a different look here 
as you're changing either the rotation of this or also the light will also affect how these things uh, interact with your model here. Uh, one more thing, remember that the matte cap in S3 and S4 are just matte caps, so try plugging in different images to experiment. This is the fun part. So um, S3 and S4 with different images here. So if we go here to the material here, so under S3, instead of this one here, let's go ahead and import from our resources folder. Uh, let me see if we go to like uh, steps to hell. So that'll give us this kind of look. It's kind of cool. And we'll also crank up the opacity there. There we go. So just by changing out that S3 image, and you could change it out and the images for any of these matte caps, but you'll get a completely different look in hell. You can just choose one of these things as well um, if you want to, to kind of get those looks. But then of course you can also go and create these in, in um, Photoshop. Let's see, texture import, and we'll do a red spidey. That's a cool one, how about that?